I'm Aria Schwartz alongside Rachel Galligan, and welcome to the Windsider Show, where it's all about the W. Each game played carries so much more importance at this stage of the season. Who will clinch that final seed, and who will secure the top spots going into the playoffs? Much to discuss in this episode, so let's cut to the basket. If you like our show, please consider joining our Patreon community, patreon.com forward slash Winsider. For less than a cup of coffee a month, you can directly show support for the hard work we do covering the W. And don't forget to see our amazing staff's written content over at Winsider.com. That's Winsider.com. Welcome back to the show. Excited to be here. Excited to get back in the booth with the great Rachel Galligan. Rachel, how you been? Uh, I feel like we've done a few of those Bleacher Report streams since you've been back, but I think this might be our first time getting in the booth. How's it going? (laughs) We've done a couple Bleacher Report streams. Um, It's been a busy summer for both of us. Me basically spending, what, three weeks over there in Europe, and then you were traveling quite a bit. Um, So really, really happy to kind of be back and in our rhythm. We've got, what, six or seven games left in the regular season before we get into playoff action. And so it's it's nice to... um, get back into our routine a little bit and be able to focus. We've got a big set of games here tonight. It's Friday as we're recording. So um, a lot that we need to catch up on um, in terms of just our own terms and just kind of being casual about it. We just want to, we just want to kind of go through some of the main topics that we, you know, have, have taken place, especially over the last couple of weeks, I would say, but you know, maybe primarily since the Olympic break. Um, But yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm excited. Um, I think we're starting to get a really good picture of, what this playoff race is going to look like, who are really exciting teams right now, who are the really disappointing teams. So yeah, where do you want to start? (laughs) Well, yeah, there's a lot we could start with. I mean, seven of the eight teams are locked for playoffs, one seed's up for grabs. Um, Honestly, I think that's kind of like where we should start the hot topic. Why not? Let's dive right in to the craziest whatever, especially because like going into this season for a little bit of, uh, you know, backstory, whatever reference, Washington was fairly open about, hey, we're punting for a few seasons. And there's been a lot of animosity, a lot of critique of their head coach, uh, Eric T. But this team is now sitting well within the playoff hunt. Let me talk to you about it real, real quick. So Phoenix, Indiana, Seattle, Vegas, Minnesota, Connecticut, and New York have all clinched. Whereas Chicago, Atlanta, Washington, and Dallas are all very much in the hunt. Chicago, Atlanta, and Washington all sitting at essentially the same record at with 11 wins. Chicago and Atlanta, just 22 losses, while Washington has 23. Um, and then if you want to zoom out a little bit, Chicago on a seven-game losing streak. They were easily in that playoff race yeah. uh, and have you know skidded back to eighth spot, tied for eighth right now, still holding it, but still uh, concerning if you're a Chicago Sky fan. And so shout out to tankathon.com. Uh, going to run down the uh, strength of schedule. So teams playing toughest opponents. Oh, excuse me. And versus easiest opponents. I was looking at it backwards. Dallas and Washington have the toughest schedule uh, left in this game with six and five games. Both of them there. Washington has to play Minnesota, have to take on the fever, have to take on New York before uh, this season's done on the toughness side. Whereas uh dal excuse me that was dallas whereas washington uh sorry i'm getting so confused here on the team (laughs) dallas is taking on new york vegas seattle and the fever so that is a really tough schedule they're taking on new york twice yeah Yeah. yeah, and washington on new york minnesota fever then you have a little bit further down atlanta just has new york similarly new york uh minnesota and indiana and then down to Chicago, who has the easiest schedule, as it would be, uh, just taking on Connecticut and Minnesota. And those are the tough opponents. Those are like that they're facing. We're not talking about the easier opponents because those games are more up for grabs. So I guess like looking at this, Rachel, um, and I'm sorry for confusing everyone by just listing a bunch of team names. <laughs> but Rachel, like, is there how much are you looking at who they're playing versus who these teams have been this season? Because Chicago on a ridiculous slide, but has the easiest schedule. And I don't know. I'm curious where your take is on who you think locks up that last spot. Um, 
I think this is interesting that they've been able to lay it out like this. It's hard to sit here and even consider, in my opinion, um, the Dallas Wings, like an easy opponent, um, especially with, with Satu back. I know that they have absolutely had a horrendous year. A lot of that can be attributed to injuries. Um, but I mean, if I'm, if I'm one of these teams right now vying for this last spot, um, I, I don't want to play Dallas. I mean, obviously everybody you play, right. Is they're trying to jockey for position, but you know, Dallas, it's like, do they just kind of embrace this? Cause let's be very clear. Like no one has been officially eliminated yet. Um, obviously Dallas and Los Angeles are at the very bottom, you know, of, of the tiers and, and would have to pretty much, I would imagine <laughs> went out at this point. Um, so very unlikely we're, we're really focused on that, you know, the sky, the dream, the mystics, but like Dallas is a scary team, you know, just with like Arike and you've got Sabli and, and I mean, that team is not what they were before the Olympic break. Um, I know it's still been underwhelming at moments. They've lost two in a row as we're recording this game, but like, that's a scary opponent. Um, I think when it comes to Chicago, the fact that they have been on this atrocious slide, we can't deny the fact that they've been without their leading scorer, Kennedy Carter. Um, you know, that, that is a team that, you know, lost Mabry into the trade. Now they're sitting here and it's just been real. A lot of it is Carter being out. How many did she miss? I think it was maybe four, four or five games. And and that's a big chunk of the, kind of what this skit is. And so now you've got Carter back and then you combine that with this easiest strength of schedule remaining and playing Connecticut and Minnesota. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Right. And, and, and then you look at Washington, that's kind of just the one thing I'll say about this Washington team is regardless whether it was the start of the season or whether it's now, this team's always played hard. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, yes, it was openly talked about just kind of embracing that things were going to look different, that this is going to be a rebuild. Um, they're going to have a lottery pick regardless. It seemed more than likely, but it just feels like this team just clicks well. They just play well and they play hard. Um, the players are out there competing. And I, I've looked at this team from from May up until now, and they compete every single night, night in and night out. They just didn't necessarily have the most talented team. And now you've got a team that's playing their best basketball at the right time. So it's like, damn, are they serious about really potentially sliding in here? Um, I don't know. It's interesting to me. I, I, I'm not sure how this is going to go down. I think it's easy for me to look at Chicago. Um, I, I know things have, it's been a really rough patch, but you throw in Kennedy Carter into that equation and, and you look at just what she brings to this team offensively and how unguardable she can be in moments. I think Chicago has got a real legitimate shot. Yeah. I, I have to think that also just because when you look at it to your point about Dallas and who these teams have to play, I almost consider T Dallas as a tougher opponent team I agree. because of those elements you laid out. And so when I look funny, at it, right? because they're like the second worst record in the league, but I don't know. I look at this team completely different after the Olympic break. Yeah. And, and I honestly, I look at it and it's between Chicago and Atlanta, but Atlanta having to play three tough teams plus Dallas and then the mystics twice, that's concerning. And then you play uh, Chicago one time. I mean, I, I think honestly, it's up for grabs. Dallas, I think, is just behind the eight ball too much. Playing so many tough teams. Yeah. Look, it would be impressive. It would raise some eyebrows if Dallas was somehow able to get in here. The yeah. other funny thing is like, when you talk about Dallas, they're one of the teams that doesn't necessarily have the same style of benefit of these other teams of not making the playoffs. Obviously, Atlanta has been moving some players uh, doesn't exactly have like all their chips in on the draft, but like a team like Los Angeles, a team like Washington, very well committed to the draft. Chicago has been making moves to get back into drafts. So it's like, normally if your team's not making the playoffs, you want to fall back into that. Well, at least we have draft picks coming in so we can get a better pick. Um, not every team has that. So it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, for me, though, yeah, D Dallas is the team you don't want to face, but like Dallas is also the team that's like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like you're behind the eight ball. You might not make the playoffs. You're probably not making the playoffs, but you're probably the scariest of those teams. No, no, it's just it's just going to be interesting to observe these next couple of weeks. Um, who who go who goes on a little bit of a hot streak? I think it it makes sense for Chicago to try and be in the playoffs. Um, you know, I I don't know that you know Washington. I guess I guess like does. Really, you got to start coming down. To, I mean, no, no player is going to go out there and like intentionally tank. That's not how this. That's not how tanking works. Um, but in your opinion, who does it serve the most? Like 
to to like get in the playoffs because like it's going to be like it's going to come down to the 19th that very last day of games and that I guess that's exciting from a fan perspective it's not just a two horse race it's a re- realistically a three horse race right now what with how well Washington is playing but who does it serve the most to make it into the playoffs that's actually a really good question because i I view it from a variety of elements. Right. I'm not just going to view it in the sense of you get draft picks. You also need to view it like for a team like Dallas, where you have star players possibly becoming free agents who are going to want to walk. So how does making the playoffs impact your presentation to a player who's been around you know, on your team for a while and now maybe is considered. So that's where the elements come in, where it's almost like Dallas. I feel like if you're Dallas and you can somehow make the playoffs, I think it would be the most remarkable about all by all of these. Right. Let's be honest, Dallas, you know, the expectation going into this year with Dallas was they were going to be a top four team. That was the next step. And we sat here before the season and we said, this is going to be a make or break year for this for the Dallas Wings. We're going to find out if they're legitimate or if they're pretenders. And obviously there's been a massive amounts of injury and you play, you know, a majority of your season without arguably your best player. Okay. I understand that. However, you know, this team doesn't need to continue to, I don't know, just, just stockpile draft assets. They need to start working their way up into true contention. This has been a major letdown year for the Dallas wings. And I don't, I don't care what anyone else says. This has been disappointing. Uh, So I agree with you. If, If they can find a way to, you know, go on a streak here. I don't think it's likely from what I've seen from this team this year, but if they could try to find a way to go on a streak here, just from the perception standpoint and maybe get hot in the playoffs, they could be a dangerous team, but I just don't They're know. A dangerous they're team in the playoffs. I, I completely agree. And then on, on the flip side, I think you look at the Atlanta dream, right? Where Chicago has gone back into the draft. Uh, the Atlanta dream, not right. So the Atlanta dream have moved out of the draft. They're talking in the, in the, the 2025 draft, we're talking about a second round pick and a third right. round pick. Yeah, so, so like, it doesn't help them at all. Exactly. They need to make the playoffs, right? Where Chicago has moved back in, Dallas, fine. They need to make it for a different reason. Um, that Yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at. Washington, We everyone knows they got draft picks. Heck, Washington, really interesting stat uh, that I tweeted out a while ago. That was basically, and shout out to my people feeding me stats, but basically at a certain point, Washington did not have the number one pick uh, lottery percentage wise, whatever, but because they had the two and the three, it added up to be a higher percentage than the LA Sparks, who had the number one. Uh, yeah, so I think that that last playoff spot is going to be fun. That's kind of, you know, taken up the headlines in my mind for the remainder of this season yeah. versus, you know, who's going to get what seed. I think, honestly, that's more exciting in some ways. But since we're talking about seeding, Rachel, who do you think, based on who's made, the playoffs so far who's locked down a spot to remind folks new york connecticut minnesota vegas seattle indiana and phoenix who do you think is the if you had to pick today favorite to win Mm, i mean (laughs) uh it's 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 probably harder than ever to answer this question um and I, i find myself thinking about it quite a bit in the last few days to be honest with you uh i think there's an argument for Connecticut, Minnesota, I think where I'm at right now is just from the overall perspective. And you have a team that made it to the finals last year who got got beat in the finals. You've got that edge to you, more of an edge, um, not, not as much of an edge as you know we've seen from like the Vegas Aces of the past. But the New York Liberty have been in this moment. Um, they were in the moment. I think this is the next progressive step, right, is, is you're kind of building a franchise, you know, from the ground up, you make it to the finals, you get beat in the finals. Okay. Now you've got that experience. Now you've got the depth. You've got, you know, superstars on this team who are capable of going off any given night. Uh, I've got to go with the New York Liberty at this point, at this point right now, it's not a major gap at all. I'm just going with, because I think this team is the deepest. Um, they, they, they have that experience and I think they they're built for playoff basketball but it's really hard for me personally to to really overlook the Minnesota Lynx. And, I, and I'm not trying to, you know, poo-poo on the Connecticut Sun because I think there's an argument to be made there as well. I'm just talking about, you know, just what I've seen this year. Um, 
you know, just the, the, the elevation of play from certain individuals at certain times throughout the course of the season. New York has all of the pieces. This very well could be their year. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I just, I don't know. I, if I had to put money on it, I would go New York. But you can tell in my voice, I'm not, I'm not 100% confident in that. What about you? Yeah, I, I freaking hate that we're on the same page on this one. I think, <laughs> like, first of all, I, th- I, I, hearing you talk about it made me realize something that, like, for so many years, New York, because they are such a market and have such loud fans, and I don't mean that in a negative way at all. I just mean when you're in such a big place and you have, by natural stance, so many nu- numerically more fans on social media on certain things, there's going to be this percept- perception. And we talked about it earlier when it came to the Indiana Fever when it was hard to rank them in the league because so many people are always talking about them, so many of their games are always on national television, you're kind of flooded with them, so you kind of give them a little bit more. I think somewhat in New York's uh, perspective, not perspective, from New York's situation this year, it's been a a welcome thing to have the Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese effects uh, in the league because people have overlooked New York all season long. The pressure has not been on them and yeah. they can benefit from that because yes, New York, every time I get comfortable enough to say these are far and, and, and clearly the favorites, which look, you're the number one team. You've been the number one team for a very long time. You got a three and a half game lead on the next closest team. You should be considered the favorites and you are the favorites, but the clear in between the style of favorites we've grown used to with Seattle and Vegas of recent or Minnesota before that, that just isn't there. Um, but yeah, so I think it's it's New York. Connecticut, I have questions. Vegas, Connecticut and Vegas are both, I don't know, in that same realm of, of, of questions, but Vegas is kind of heading down while Connecticut's heading up. And then Minnesota, I think my next question was kind of going to be like, who's that underdog team that you think could upset uh, the the top dogs, the the favorites? And for me, I think we both answered it in Minnesota. They're that one that's like, it's Minnesota for me too. Yeah. Right. Like you can see it, right? You, we can all see how Minnesota would win these finals. Um, but obviously we still have the questions. Is Minnesota shooting go cold? Uh, is there an injury? Does, do they have a way to keep up with the high octane offense of the New York Liberty or the size of John Quill Jones or the skill set um, of some of their other players? I think there's a lot of questions with that. Is, is, but where are you with Vegas and Seattle? Ugh. Seattle is so frustrating to watch. I don't know. I, I'm so with you on this. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. It's, I just, I just haven't enjoyed watching this team. And I know maybe, maybe I pissed some people off with that, but like, I don't get excited to watch this team. And I don't know that I can put my finger on it exactly. Um, I just feel like across the board, they've, they've underperformed for a team that was built with the, the stardom and the, the experienced vets that are on this, this team. It, it just, it has not, I don't know, it just hasn't, it hasn't clicked the way I thought it would click. Um, and it, that, that's not to say that this team, you know, couldn't get into the playoffs and get hot and go on a run. They just, they're too hot and cold for me. They're too inconsistent. Uh, they're inconsistent on, on both ends, in my opinion. I know, I know that, you know, they talk about their defense and they, I, I, they actually look the best defensively I've ever seen the other night. I forget who they were playing, but I was really impressed with, you know, how they, I think they're starting to get pissed off a little bit with their play. And I think they're starting to kind of not hold themselves to a higher standard, but that expectation that we should be playing our best basketball right now. And we're not, and you know, may, maybe that flips a switch a little bit and we do see this team, you know, peak at the right time. I, I think it's possible. Um, I just, we haven't seen it. We haven't seen it. I, I think we've seen some good performances, some, some nice individual type of seasons, but as a whole, it's just kind of, now I'll say it's not as bad as is the Phoenix Mercury. It's not as bad as watching the Dallas Wings. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so I definitely Well the one the one pushback I'll give is the Phoenix Mercury, like while none of us are sitting anywhere near putting them in contention, I would say I agree with everything you've said about Seattle. Phoenix Mercury, at least there's been flashes of the excitement, the energy is there. With Seattle, I just feel like like there's never an exciting. I don't know. Maybe it's exciting I exciting because of Kalia Copper. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just it's just that Phoenix is missing something. Like they're they 
And I think I know they had like a come to Jesus meeting the other night where they really had to like talk about all their technicals and like the complaining and like all the issues that they're facing. And I, you know, accountability and things like that. I think that's fascinating because they are clearly, um, you know, ahead. I think they're like, they've got like the most technicals, like double than the next team. Yeah, them. And so clearly that, that, that organization and, and, and that team, you know, have a lot to figure out in terms of just what it means to go out and compete and, and allow frustrations to get the best of you. I think at times, like, like, I think that's the thing I struggle with that, you know, there sometimes this team is so upset with the refs and they're so fiery and they're so whatever that like they, they forget to compete. And I know that that maybe sounds bad, but that's what I see out of, of Phoenix. Sometimes it's just like, okay, you're not going to get the calls tonight, but is that going to stop you from going to play in defense? You know, I, and I just, I think sometimes they, they don't give that effort that I want to see from, you know, a team in September, you know, late August, September, early September basketball. So um, Seattle's a hard one for me to really, like I said, I can't really put it into words because I, I, oh, they're, they're 20 and 14, you know, they're fifth in the standings. They've secured a playoff spot. Maybe I'm being too harsh on them. Um, I just have them in that next tier down, probably alongside the Las Vegas Aces. And I, I think the only reason I have Las Vegas as, you know, a team in my mind of potent, probably having more potential of going and having a shot to get hot and win this is because we know what this team can be capable of. And they've got mm-hmm. the greatest player in the world, the greatest basketball player in the world, men or women, in my opinion, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, Asia Wilson Facts. and the way she's playing right now. And so you've got that on your team. And if if the others and the, the bench and some depth can start to kind of come along here late, yeah. Okay, I think the Aces could turn it on and go do it. I just don't know if Seattle can because I don't know. I think part of it is this team hasn't been together long enough, too. Mm-hmm. Um, so from a from a consistency standpoint, from a just a, a a journey standpoint, you've got the New York Liberty who, you know, they've they've been together not as long as the aces had been together when they, you know, finally got to the point where they won their first championship, but the New York Liberty, I think because of the the talent they have on this roster, uh, were able to, you know, really surpass some of those steps quicker than what we've seen. And they were able to get to the finals last year and having that chip on your shoulder of losing that and having the depth and the talent. I mean, I just, I just can't say anyone else is above them, especially from, again, just the consistency standpoint of teams being together and going through that natural progression of, climbing to a point where you're winning a championship oh totally i mean i look at seattle and vegas in the same boat of just dropping stocks we know that they have star power we know that they have potential and maybe it all clicks at once but like they are just yeah like i'm sitting here and i'm not even considered like i'm no longer seriously considering vegas as like a serious serious contender that's just me being blunt because Seattle, I obviously, I think they can. I, I wouldn't say don't go for them, don't vote against them, blah, blah, blah. But I just feel like when, when we look at when we look at these teams, right, Indiana, their stock is rising. They're looking better and better. Phoenix is not looking better. They're looking stagnant or worse. Seattle is stagnant or worse. Vegas, similarly stagnant or worse. Whereas Minnesota, Connecticut, and New York are all continuing to climb up. And so that that's kind of where I view that. Well, I think I think when I watch these teams and, and those three compared to some of the others, like I think the best way I can try to explain it is just a a chemistry on the floor. Like the way that these five players on the floor feel or, or these how this team just is with one another. You know, like I'm talking about like I don't see that with the Las Vegas Aces this year, like we used to see from the past. Just absolutely out there loving the game, loving each other, running through a brick wall, having fun. Like I don't see that. And out of some of these teams, I see it out of New York, maybe not to the magnitude that, you know, we've become accustomed to, but this team, they they know their roles. They play well together. They have that chemistry. I see it with Connecticut and I definitely see it with Minnesota. Minnesota might be the best out of all three of them, which is, which is why I have to take them as seriously as I take them because, you know, you, 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 you can talk about offense, you can talk about defense, but this team really enjoys playing together and you can tell out there on the floor. No, I'm with you. All right, next topic as we move on. Uh, we talked about, I mean, I think I know who the Jekyll and Hyde team is, that team that's like super hot, super cold. For me, it's Vegas, right? Like we know if if magically everything goes right and they all turn it on because of how Asia's playing, heck, they don't even need to fully turn it on. They can go half. The problem is they haven't been doing that, if you argue. Uh, is, is, is that the Vegas team for you? Or are you going to read in a different perspective 
and go Indiana Fever first half of the season, second half. Are we talking about winning at all? No, I'm just talking about who's that Jekyll Hyde team. That team, when they look good, you're like, oh, wow, you're great. And then when they look bad, you're like, oh, wow, you're bad. No, I don't think I can consider Indiana Fever Jekyll and Hyde when they're so young. And everybody who has a brain in basketball knew that this team was going to take time to kind of come together and figure out you know, the chemistry and the dynamics and learning and playing together new, you know, it's those things take time. It just is what it is. And so it's been fun to watch the fever progress over the course of, you know, the season and to be able to watch this team get into the gym and practice as much as they did during the Olympic break that paid off. You know, we don't have a lot of practice time for franchises to get together and practice. And and that was the best thing that Indiana fever were able to do was to truly get time away from, you know, game days, practice. And and we've seen that happen. And that's come to fruition since the Olympic break. Went in five in a row. They're eight and two in their last 10 games. So I don't I don't see that as Jekyll and Hyde when theirs was always going to be, you know, a rough start com- combined with a tough schedule. League did no services to the fever and when it when it came to that. Um so I just see that as a progression. Um which is thank God it happened and now it's okay, super fun to watch and that's all anybody wants to talk about. Um, I think the Jekyll and Hyde to me, gosh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Probably. I would probably have to say the aces. Um, you you just really don't know any given night what you're going to get. I think, you know, what you're going to get out of Asia Wilson, but I, I don't even know if I would consider Vegas Jekyll and Hyde because it's not like I've, I haven't seen this team compete at their full potential all season long. Cause you you know know what you're going to get. You always Not under underwhelming. You, you knew you know what you're going to get from Asia Wilson, and that's going to be good enough to beat a lot of people. But like, I haven't seen this team look, and maybe maybe that's the issue we have, right? Is because we we have we only know how to compare them to the greatness we've seen the last couple of years. This is a different team this year. I haven't seen them, in my opinion, and what this team in the past can do defensively. That's the first thing. They're not the same defensive team. And I just, I don't know. So I don't know that I have a Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe if, maybe if I did have to mention one, maybe the Dallas wings, just because they show flashes of being really good. Um, but at this point, are, are they kind of an afterthought? <laughs> why, why are we even spending so much time talking about them? I think I am because I know what this team when they're healthy and, and they're at their full strength can be. And so I think they've shown that at moments and then it just like completely fades away, whether it's quarter to quarter, half to half, game to game. Like I, I'm just blown away of how and, and Hyde has been a lot more <laughs> present than Jekyll when it comes to the Dallas Wings. But like, man, when you see this team playing at their full strength, obviously the, the, the intention, the progression was they were supposed to be in that top four or five and they're not even close to it. So I would honestly say my answer is Dallas Wings. Most disappointing team. Dallas Wings. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. I mean, I, I, I don't so know. I don't. Atlanta Dallas Dream, are, Atlanta Dream or the Dallas Wings. So I'm going Atlanta or Seattle. Um, mm, okay. Seattle, more of a eye test perspective of just underwhelming. Well, um, I think we have to keep it in perspective about Seattle, too. I know it's felt underwhelming. Why is that? Like, because they're still they're still good and they're still a threat in this league. And when I look at the schedule and I see Seattle's playing somebody, I'm like, ooh, that'll be a good game, right? Um, I don't really know what you're gonna get. Maybe that's a good Jekyll and Hyde example. Um, sorry not to cut you off, but like no. yeah, Seattle, I <sighs> Seattle it's, it's only their first because year together. It's their first year I together. I know, but the expectation was that they would be up there. So maybe it's because I had higher expectations maybe. for them, thinking that they were vets, thinking that their style of play would mesh together. Uh, and it clearly hasn't to the level that I was thinking. But the other team for me, I'm glad we we saw eye to eye on on this also because we've we've been we've been linking up on a lot of stuff. Rachel, the Atlanta <laughs> Dream, just like I feel like for the past few years, they've basically just been at the same stage. They, yeah. Like they've added, they've made trades to add good players. They've brought in good free agents. They've brought in the number two scoring player in WNBA history. Uh, who's getting double doubles out the wazoo this season? You but yet they Dan, still. Dan Potiver, who you know built this a Las Vegas Aces team, you know on paper. So yeah, there's a lot of things there that we thought that you know a certain couple of years ago this team would be looking a lot different than what they look right now. Yeah, and I, for me, I thought that this was going to be a year of growth. I mean, we talk a lot mm-hmm. on this pod about 
you know, a make or break year for Dallas. Was this, is this a make or break year from Atlanta? I think I could see them either cutting loose on some things coming into next year, or I could see them trying to give it one more year and having to make big changes mid season next year. If there aren't, that's where I'm at with Atlanta. No, Maybe I'm sure. pulling the fire alarm too early. I don't think um, so. I, I just think, you know, when you look, we're at a stage in Atlanta where we know we have talent. Uh, maybe this is a similar stage to pre-Bill Ambeer in Vegas. Maybe this is a similar stage to pre-James Wade in Chicago. Um, or, you know, I'm sure there's a good example somewhere else. Pre-Sandy in New York. Uh, but that's where I'm at. I, we were going to talk. Yeah. I want to bring up one more team. Why did neither of us mention the Chicago Sky? Because the expectations were so low for them this year. <laughs> if we're being, are we going to be real well, I mean, here, yes, Rachel? Yes, we are. That's and that's what that's my point of bringing it up. Everybody's so like, oh my god, you know, we've lost seven in a row, and the sky's falling down. You know, literally, um, <laughs> it's it's not it's not great there right now. No one's trying to say that it is, um, but like I was going into this season, we talked at length about it. Like I thought this would be another lottery team. Oh yeah, no. I mean, they're, they've overperformed for the first half. Um, look, and, and I was—it's hilarious you brought them up because I was about to say we were going to talk rookie of the year, but I figure let's save that for our next yeah, episode okay. because we've already gone so long on this. But tons to discuss there. Tons to discuss about Chicago. There's a few teams we didn't touch on, um, and we'll get to them in a moment. But I do want last thing I want to say at least before we end this episode is I want to give some love to our listeners. Uh, not we didn't we never try and get too sappy on the episodes, but I was at a Lynx game recently with my family last week, and I was stopped in the hall during halftime by a young mom and her daughters. She asked if I was Arya Schwartz. First of all, pronounced my name right, which already blown away. <laughs> Second of all, uh, she told us how much she loved the show. I was obviously very awkward and shy because I don't take compliments well, uh, <laughs> but I do want to give some love to whoever that lovely person was because it truly meant the world to myself and I know meaningful to you too. It's just like so special because in our mind, no one listens to our no, episodes. Like, people listen to our show. <laughs> right. It's, it's nice to know we're not doing it for that. Uh, but we hope everyone enjoys it. And uh big shout out to that mom. Any parent who's taking their kids to a WNBA I game is it. doing it right. So that's, awesome. that's awesome. she had, the kid had a young Lindsay Whalen Jersey on. Amazing. I was like, Where did you get that? I need one for my kids. Cause they don't make kids jerseys. If anybody knows anyone who, uh, repurposes old WNBA jerseys into youth sizes, please let yeah, me know. Please hit us up. Uh, I'm going to steal a line. Uh, I'm not going to let Rachel tell us who the goat is because I'm going to give goat to the mom who I saw in the hallway. Yes. She's our goat for the episode. Let's go. Let's go.